nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. December 18th, meeting, order of all three commissioners, the order, and the county attorney are not present. Uh, first on the agenda, we have a public hearing for amendments for the Fulton County Zone Ordinance. We're going to table that. Um, so we're going to go to the Department of Updates on John Dyer Highway. Projects. Uh, it's been in Brown, they've got their paving done. Uh, I went with uh, USI the other day. We looked at uh, uh, the paving. Uh, paving we thought was pretty decent, but uh, the striping on the 450 and 700, we weren't very pleased with that. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Uh, uh, I'm not willing to pay for it. Yeah, they didn't finish the job unless they've done it since I was up there. Uh, the striping is spotty at the best. Uh, they painted over stone. And it's just about the poorest job I've ever seen striping. So uh, they're to go to USI is negotiating that. Uh, they're going to ask them to redo it or take a no pay on it. So um, we, we haven't settled. Why the working site is still up on 102? Yeah. Okay. Not a very good job there. Um, uh, this year, uh, or coming year, uh, in January, there's going to be the 2024 call uh, in DOTA from 1 million to 1.5 million for their call. Uh, so I met uh, Jody. I, last week, uh, we discussed some possibilities on that. We could up our paving. Uh, we had a million dollars worth of paving projects lined up. The problem with that is it's going to increase our uh, match, our local match, from 333 to 500,000, uh, which is going to cut into our, uh, you know, paving and chip and seal for us. So I got to thinking about uh, maybe turning in some large culverts to supplement that extra 500000 So we were looking at maybe doing that. We're kicking around some ideas to turn in. Probably just add something to the first year. It's going to be going after the small counties, aren't it? Hmm? Going after the small counties, aren't it? Well, it's going to it's going to hurt our budget. So, but, I mean, so they have to, you have to pay a half a million to get your million bucks? No. Half a million. So they're willing to give us a million and a half in grant money. Okay, okay. But we would have to put up 500000 okay, for our match. So instead of 333000 we'd have to put up 500000 So it would be $2 million worth of work. I got you. I got you. But, uh, mm -hmm. right. So, you know, it's still a good deal, but coming up with match money. But uh, we're looking at some possibilities. <coughs> I've got some very large culverts that need replaced. They're going to be pretty healthy expenses next year, so I thought maybe this would be a good way of 
working that in. And uh, I think the boys are matching it. Get the full 1.5 million. Get uh, they're considered bridges instead of you know, actual culverts. So. I'll get with you here first. Give you some proposals that we're going to do. Uh, federal aid, uh, we've got old 31 submitted. I haven't heard anything from MDOT on that. They're starting to come around and have dates for different ones to pitch their cases, but I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, 161, I did meet with uh, uh, NIMSCO last week. Uh, we've got some issues down there with their gas line. We've got to work that out. Uh, they can't find it. <laughs> kind of like a AT and T with the bridge up here. Mm -hmm. Kind of going through that scenario, but with gas, and then trying to get the landowners down there to sign right away. Dave's familiar with that situation. He's done. do have uh, for you guys to sign is uh, it's the final inspection papers for Bridge 50. Uh, I know we went out there one day and walked and looked at it and talked. CAP letter, uh, and what that is is so last year uh, in January I contacted uh, NDOT, uh, so I sent NDOT all the updates and everything for ADA and Title VI that the county has done over I don't know, X number of years, basically since our transition plans were put into place and uh, sent them all of our updates and paperwork for their, them to look through. And basically they said, just sit tight and we'll get back to you. And so they did this last week. And uh, they want the county to go through and update the actual policies for both. Uh, they're asking that about every county in the state that hasn't done it for a few years. Um, so what they, they're wanting is uh, us to send them, and I sent you a copy, I believe, of uh, a promise from us, and they want uh, me and Christina both, as uh, she's the Title VI coordinator, uh, to sign that and send it back in, as long as you guys are in favor of it. And that'll say within 120 days, we'll have our policies updated. Uh, so I talked to USI, and they're willing to do that for us. Uh, they didn't have, they was going to get a task order, but they didn't have that together for tonight for you to sign. Um, but they'll have a small fee for that. I don't know what it will be. It shouldn't be too bad because all the work has been done, uh, all the updates and everything. It would just be rewriting the actual policy, the wording. Um, and they said they could easily have that done in a quick So you'll probably have their feed by the 29th then maybe? She thought they, she was hoping she'd have it to me today, but she didn't get it. Katie, okay. when I said she, uh, Katie, you know, but she didn't get it to me today. But yeah, I would think she'd have it to me by the 29th. And then we'd get that in, get that going, and they'd have it rewritten and turned into NDOT within 120 days. The world would be good. Sounds like a plan. So, as long as you're good with that, I'll get with 
Mm -hmm. Christina will sign it and then move on. Sounds good. It works. Um, and the only other thing I have is uh, I have two transfers you should see tonight. Uh, one's for, for $1,500 from Grange Assessment, and that's to uh, cover fees for SIDHOTS, and the other one's $640 uh, from health care to, to pay for the assistance of the kids pay. Finish them out for the rest of the year. That's all I have, unless you have anything for us. Anything else? Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to snow this year. I, mm -hmm. I might get away with saying that. This it might. Year. Yep, this year. Yeah. Next year might be a different story. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a week or so ago, but I do have a new one here um, in reference to the first, second, and third year. Um, or not a new one, but one printed out. If you would like to sign that or if you have any questions on this film and map. If you have any questions on that, do I need to go over that a little bit, maybe? Yeah, why don't you? Okay, so um, Crossroads GIS Solutions, what they do, they'll act as an admin in the GIS uh, platform for Spillman. And so what they'll do, they'll clean it up, something, uh, an mapping and Esri all kind of intertwined with each other, the same vocabulary. And Crossroads, what they'll do is they'll make sure our center lines populate and so forth, and we will create that trouble ticket and they will deal with anything that is <coughs> in the mapping for Spillman. So um, like our mobile map needs to be updated and um, a lot of other things, and it just needs to work properly. So um, they take the headache out. Um, it's pretty inexpensive versus hiring a full-time GIS person because we all in the county department heads have a little bit of the uh, mapping solutions like addressing and so forth. So um, these folks put it all together. They've worked in Spillman. They know Spillman. They've been first responders, law enforcement, or whatever. And they'll make, they're just they're the company that takes care of the mapping. Um, sometimes you can spend quite a few hours on one issue in Spillman. And we just don't have time for that. So. Um, my department will pay a year, Josh's department will pay a year, and uh, Casey, the assessor's office, is allowed to spend some of her funds. So we all have that money already allocated, so there's no appropriations needed. Okay. So they'll be sending us a claim form, but we don't have that consulting agreement signed, which that's what you guys do. But everything looks pretty good. Um, I did, couldn't remember if I had sent that to Holly or not um, a couple weeks ago. Couldn't find it, so I did send I that to her again. Mm -hmm. I got what remind us that dollar amount again, if you would, please? Um, yeah, let me go back here. Okay. The first year is like. 8,500, the second year is 9,000, and then the third year is 9,500. And if we were going to do one year, it was the total, I mean, it was more than the three years combined. Um, we have got to do some cleanup. Do we, we need to do that today, or can we let Holly look at that and then? You can sign it by the 29th. Okay. Maybe okay. If that's okay. And then you can have I think we'd rather do that than have Holly. Yeah, I just wanted to talk good. about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're okay. We're good with it. It's just. Absolutely. Get that. 
Um, then the J and K, um, I wanted you to see that document that was signed and sent last week um, so they could order those radios. It does have Travis's 20 on there and the 30 allocated for um, the first responders. So that has been signed. And then last but not least is the um, Ritter Strategic Services. Um, Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Uh, for the quality assurance data analytics, analytic, sorry, and contract compliance and reporting. So uh, one of our issues that we did have, and I will go back to the GIS mapping, is our zone layers matching up in the center lines populating in the correct <coughs> place, which I found a few of the glitches. Um, and that will help with our reporting with Blue 3D MS in keeping the quality assurance and, and so forth and those reports will be more accurate with the location categories. Um, but anyway, um, do you have any questions on fares? Did you read his stuff? It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then he sent us that email back in regards to appointment for the EMS board. So I don't know what your feelings are. So think about that. Well, I know what yours are and I, I kind of agree with you. Yeah. The, board, the committee we had seemed to work good. They got all had accurate you want everybody involved in it. I think it's from your each of your territories you just need to confirm mm -hmm. with okay. you want it in Akron and then um, the medical direction that Dr. Mann is retiring and uh, we'll need to send a new contract with the other medical director that is taking over for him. So there are some specific specifications that um, he has to sign off on and uh, that can change just a couple of our protocols with uh, CPR compliance and stroke and <coughs> medical advice for medicine. We have to have those signatures. Okay. And I think back to the Barry, I think we'll wait till the 29th. <coughs> Holly was sick today, so make yeah. sure she looks that over and we'll sign mm -hmm. that on the 29th yeah. if she's okay with it. If you have any other questions, and then um, Ron Dittman did ask about the ambulance in Akron. Um, I know this is publicized, so um, until we have a signed contract, Lutheran is not obligated to have that third ambulance in Akron, and we're trying to diligently get the contract signed and and so forth. It was a minor hiccup and these are just normal things to work out. So sure. um, that's <clears throat> the best answer I can give you. And that's okay. all I have. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. I'll give you the best data I've got for today. Um, we still got a few loose ends going on where autopsies or toxicology has not been returned yet. So, so far this year, um, our team has served 73 citizens or their families um, in the coroner's department. Uh, of that, 44 are men and 29 are women. And if you just are interested, the whole county so far has encountered 192 deaths. So I think our death rate's down just a touch right now. Um, we've had 100 men and 92 women pass away so far this year. And it doesn't mean that they're all county residents because that includes and incorporates people in nursing homes from other counties. And our <laughs> hospital serves a variety of counties as well. So just so you might know, 
Uh, we're investigating about 38% of the deaths that occur here in Fulton County. Of that, we've had, uh, for manner of death, one undetermined, 57 natural. We've had 19 accidental, four suicide, and then a couple are pending due to autopsies. And I know I'm hoping just any day to get back um, a couple more uh, toxicology reports and then also one autopsy. I know the other one probably will not be back till maybe even February or later. Um, <coughs> so of our accidental deaths, we've got uh, three overdoses that are straight overdoses and then there's other uh, motor vehicles that have a relative to drugs and things like that that could have caused that, such as acute ethanol and Delta 9 THC intoxication. Um, we also have another person that fell down the steps and that person had had a little bit too many tramadol and that person fractured their C1 and your C1's right here at the base of the brain so the moment that snaps you cease to breathe or do anything. So that was very sad. Um, we also had uh, another fractured cervical spine uh, multiple blunt force trauma. Those last two were both motor vehicle accidents. Um, and let's see, we have a, a newer one. Uh, we have an overdose with methamphetamine, fentanyl, and bromazole. It's kind of a big tongue twister there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we have that, and we're still awaiting two more to see uh, how things are going with them. Uh, we have uh, 10 autopsies we'll be paying for this year, nine this year, one was carried over from the last day last year. Uh, we have 13 labs that we've done, that we've drawn out here for Woodlawn Hospital. That'd be like glucose, uh, anything like that. It could be like troponin for the cardiac enzyme or it can even be um, like uh, the pulmonary embolism, a D-dimer. So those are the probably three most common that we draw that we bring out to Woodlawn to be checking on folks to see what we can find out. Uh, we've also drawn 15 toxicologies, sent those out uh, for analysis. Along with that, then our autopsies are with nine more toxicologies. So we've had uh, about 24 toxicologies this year that have been performed for our county. Uh, last month we had uh, five deaths and this much month already we've had seven. So it's really moving along quite rapidly, it seems, all of a sudden here in December. Um, I don't think I reported to you because I didn't get to the last meeting about our forensic radiology lab uh, that was conducted by Margo, and uh, Gail and I chipped in on that a little bit, but Margo was the lead, leader of the pack on that. We had about 25 to 27 uh, young people from students from Indiana University Kokomo. They toured our forensic center and uh, we hosted a, a real nice educational seminar for them. Um, additionally, I wanted to talk to you about our LEPC tabletop that just took place last week. It was fantastic. Uh, the reviews are still coming in. Our after action report is due up either late this week or it'll be next week sometime. They're just awaiting some of the data and evaluation to get input. So we're excited about it. We felt like it was a good night, it was a productive night. We had a lot of collaboration with the whole community, with the tier two people, and uh, Gail worked her tail off for that, I gotta tell you. Um, she did an amazing job leading everybody and so happy to be a part of that team. Um, anyway, just wanted to let you know that. We'll have more details and she'll probably give you the breaking news once the after action report is released. So <laughs> wanted to let you know that. <laughs> um, I wanted to also let you know we've got a couple upcoming educational opportunities. Um, I'm all excited on the 9th and 10th of January, we'll be traveling down uh, to Indianapolis on death investigations. And these are relative to like thermal deaths, air crashes, um, violent deaths, uh, autopsy protocol. Some of the things uh, will be new things that will be learned and some things will be refreshing. So looking forward to that, that's in Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton County, not too far away. So I wanted to let you know, um, you'll be seeing a little uh, travel thing coming across for that. Excited to do that. And then uh, 
and won't be staying overnight or anything like that, just driving back and forth. It's two days. And then one day in February, there's a mass fatality. Uh, we can always use some more information and things like that. And hopefully, for goodness sakes, that won't ever happen. But everybody thinks that. So we always have to be ready uh, to meet the needs of our community. So those are two things coming up. And my final thing is that I need to ask about is uh, on my, uh, in my budget the last four years has been a line item for PERF, which is Public Employee Retirement Fund, but it has not been conveyed. And I've had questions each year, and so I uh, hated to have to bring it to meeting, but I'm bringing it to meeting, so I hope I can get some sort of official action on that. I do know that um, I checked with our coroner's executive director, and in, in the state of Indiana, there's 48 counties that do convey PERF to their um, coroners and there's uh, six counties the size of ours and four out of the six convey perf to their coroners. It is in the budget and it has been in the budget but it's never been conveyed. It has been in the budget for you say the last four years? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And, oh, I gotta tell you one more thing, the power cot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, the power cot. Uh, and this is, uh, there's two things about that. Um, I didn't get this down. We did have a little glitch with that on a couple of occasions, but I've gotta tell you, uh, there's a gentleman that comes down from uh, Grand Rapids, and he buzzes, or Kalamazoo, he buzzes right down within 24 hours. Uh, he replaced our battery the first time and then a motherboard. Uh, everything's been working smoothly. We've been getting beautiful green blinking lights. So when I'm over there, I check on it. I open the door and there they are blinking at me. So as long as they're doing that, we know they're working. But um, this occurred during uh, when we had a couple of calls in the city. So our city officers really came to bat and helped me. And we managed just fine with it. But um, of course, it's much nicer when it works. And I wanted to tell you that they are great. I think that, and I'm not sure the status of this. I know I've discussed it and talked about it, and I've uh, submitted paperwork relative to that. I thought at the last um, committee meeting with the council that that was talked about and discussed. But then when I was talking to Chantal today, um, she was not sure about that because what I was worried about is it was going to be on this year's business. We have money for it this year, but I didn't request any sort of budgeting for um, equipment, which that's what I originally took it out of and then found out, um, I don't know, a couple weeks later that I could not take it out of equipment. It had equipment money had to be moved to what's called contracted services, which it's a new scenario for me because we've never had anything like that. So that's why the delay on that. So but I don't know, you know, we may be okay already but she was gonna check with Christine and find out if that's been acted on. I hope it has, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But if not, then we may have to do something else. So I'm gonna let you know. If not, after the first of the year, just appropriate that money back into your account, or ask the council to appropriate that money okay. back into your account. All right. In that way, you don't fall off and go into theirs, but they can get, bring it back to you. Okay. Completely. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Merry Christmas to all, and have a happy new year. Okay, Travis, sure. <clears throat> all right, I emailed the uh, reports out last week. Any questions on this, questions or forward, or on the stats or anything? Uh, we did have one fatal, two fatal crashes, one of them was hit by Marshall County, uh, but one 1031. We've been spending a lot of time up there, so hopefully get that fixed <coughs> soon. Um, this afternoon we had 83 inmates, 16 of them for Wabash County, 13 for DOC, and then 8 for the Marshal Services. Um, we receded in roughly $500,000 in the uh, in the bond reduction since it since it became life. I don't know exactly what it is year to date, but since you guys adopted that, it's right at half a million dollars right now, so, um, and that's all from holding out of county and federal inmates, so. Have you used any of the 15% from the for anything? 
you know, not unless they're not unless they're utilizing that to to put it in the budget, the budget items like maintenance and operational costs. Yeah, that was that I shouldn't be. But then. I think it's just that they're cooking. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I, I think that's at your discretion and ours to. Yeah, I don't think. I, I haven't asked for anything. <clears throat> okay, with it, so. um, we had a merit board meeting last Friday. They approved the hiring of uh, Ben Reason for merit deputy. Ben Reason comes to us. He uh, left the Indiana State Police in July after about 11 years. Um, He's got a business here in town on the well, solar base and uh, uh, slot team with the state police. So he comes to us with a ton of experience and uh, he's been working part time with us since August and he's been a good fit. So um, he'll be starting with us after the first of the year. Um, Chief Deputy Jolly, Larry Jolly, he is retiring after 29 years of service. He's going up to Culver PD where he can start off making about $15,000 more a year than what we're paying him after 29 years. So something we definitely got to look at in 2024. Um, but we are having a luncheon for him on the 29th, pizza and cake, and he didn't want any huge fanfare, but if you like show up, he'd appreciate it. So um, we're currently reviewing an inmate phone contract in the jail. We think that we can uh, probably do better with uh, some other vendors. So. We're exploring those options now, so if we decide to go into route, we'll make sure we get it to Holly for review before we do anything. So, other than that, any questions or anything? Uh, thank you, Michelle. Good. Okay, uh, Michael, let's go. <clears throat> He's still not the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, start with the contract. <laughs> um, I can't, I'll give you the contract next time we meet. Um, I have to get the figures to plug in and see okay. what happened in my budget. I don't know if they cut it or, or not. I haven't been able to get hold of Phil to talk to her about it. So we'll get that before or right after the first of the year, whichever way it goes. Um, it would be nice to have it on 29. Yeah. That okay. way you don't miss a beat. But whatever you do, whatever the it's not the first beat I've missed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Um, ready to? I'm really happy. Uh, we have two projects, and I think we're going to keep them. One's the industrial park, and the second is uh, the school corporation's uh, learning center and child care center. Um, we'll be the only uh, group in this region city in the region to have that child care center um, and they put it on we didn't have to argue for it at all uh, it's one of the, the most important projects uh, and, and programs that uh, the state has identified so we've got those two um, states coming in on January the 11th to physically visit sites uh, so we'll take them out to where the park is proposed to be and what was uh, that date again? Excuse me, January, January 11th. I can't give you a time because <coughs> all those schedules are being set up. I'll keep you guys involved in all that because it would be helpful actually to have you all around, say you support it, and so I'll um, give you the budget is nine million. Um, the ready request is four and a half, and the match is four and a half, which means. The county is two and a quarter, and the city's two and a quarter. And um, at we this ain't point, committed to that yet, though, correct? Do what? We ain't committed to that yet, correct? No. Okay. The um, private match will be as we fill the park, and we're talking years. Is obviously you know about that, um, but we're not committed to anything. And, and the bottom line, to be honest with you is that's why the january 11 meeting is so important because the state can still say no it's not functional it's not something that's going to be feasible that's going to happen uh even so so that you can start planning uh, i really don't think the money would come to us before 2025 anyway the way the way 2021 went or uh, ready one went so i mean there's plenty of time to sit down have a lot of conversations about what needs to be done and, and how to get it done. 
Um, the housing study. Were, now, can I interrupt you a minute? Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. No, go ahead. The schools. How does how does that work? The money for, for our. She's for got it all. She's got it she all. She is absolutely out of 21 projects. She is the only one in the entire region who's got everything, the match, all of it. She's got drawings. She's got uh, all the studies that have to be done, the whole thing. Great, good job. For and it's awesome. just additions to existing buildings is, is what it is. It's a question of three, three rooms or five rooms. Um, mm -hmm. And the cool thing about what Janet's doing is this. One of the sh problems is it's not so much that there is um, a waiting list for kids to get in to do this. There's a problem with there's not enough older people who are certified for child care, and her program incorporates educating child care, and she's already got a program going out there that she's used as a model on this. And she will. Um, she's got kids are going out and getting child care certificates. Good. So I mean, this program wow. is up. It's running. The state fund or our regional people looked at it, and it's like, yeah, this has got to go. We there were three or four other child care programs. Not anyone has completed. She completed the whole thing, and so this could start right now. Um, there's other projects, of course, that we tried to get in. They don't work um, right now, but I'm encouraging the people I've been talking with and working with not to stop doing it. One of the things I've noticed on all these projects in our region is they're old existing projects. There's not a single one that's new. And where Fulton County's kind of fallen down is, well, we didn't get it, so we're not gonna proceed with it. Well, and everybody else goes, well, we didn't get it, fine, we're gonna continue, we'll find the money somewhere. We'll do grants, we'll, however it has to happen. Um, and so I'm encouraging these guys to continue. Let's go forward, let's not stop. And we'll just take it an inch at a time if we have to. And uh, I think I've, I've met with a uh, good response on that. So people want to keep going, so we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Okay. Um, the housing study, um, I'm working with the housing hub. We are looking at, uh, two physical locations where we can start doing some construction. It's all tentative right now, but what we're gonna wind up doing is using those two, two locations to bring in um, developers to take a look through the community and, and see what they think could happen. The other side of it is I'm working with two developers um, right now, talk, trying to get them to come in. I've got two buildings down here downtown um, that I think have a lot of potential and I'm talking to them there's commercial developers uh, to come in and take a look at, at rehabbing the buildings working magic on them um, so that's where we're sitting right now and of course everything's kind of old on because of the holiday we're sitting around you know doing our thing um, and then the last thing um, we had we changed officers at the last board meeting. Um, Jason Group's new president, uh, Andrew Horseman for our AMC is our vice, and Michelle uh, Million is coming over as treasurer. David moves over as uh, past, immediate past president. Um, and that's pretty much about it. Everything's been going on. Mostly ready. Yeah, I'm ready to let it go. Um, I don't know if I said this before or not, uh, Blackader, we got the, the money is in, the contract is considered alive, and uh, sometime in the summer they will start work. And as soon as they do, they'll let us know, we'll let you guys know. And then we're still talking right now with um, some railroad people about possibly throwing a spur in there, uh, which seems to be possible. So, I mean, it's all discussion at this point in time, but that's where that sits. Thank you, Marco. Okay. Trent, you have anything? Just want to reiterate our uh, intention to work closely with you guys and the county council at all times. We have open conversations. If we disagree, we disagree. We're going to be friends and we're going to keep working together. 
Sounds good. <laughs> well, to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we have the commissioner's uh, certificate sale resolution. I have resolution one two one eight two zero two three to let a resolution establishing the intent to conduct a commissioner's sale to sell tax sale certificates for properties that are severely delinquent in payment of property taxes. Whereas there are several properties in Fulton County that have severely that are severely delinquent in the payment of property taxes, having been offered for tax sales and which receive no bids equal to or in excess of the minimum sale price. The parcel numbers of those properties being attached to this resolution as exhibit A. Whereas there is an assessed value associated with these properties for taxation purposes, but no taxes are being collected, therefore causing a lower than expected tax distribution to those taxing units and taxing districts within the property, or within which the properties are located. And whereas the Fulton County Commissioners desire to have these properties back on the tax rolls, the tax is being collected. And whereas Indiana Code 6-1.1-24, Dash six allows for the Fulton County Commissioners to acquire a lien on those delinquent properties and receive issuance of the tax sale certificates for those properties without taking time into the properties. <coughs> there are no the liability and cost only associated with taking the title. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Fulton County Board of Commissioners that the county executives shall acquire liens and receive, receive tax sale certificates of the properties listed on Exhibit A that are severely delinquent and sell said certificates at a <coughs> properly advertised commissioner tax sale, tax certificate sale. Any questions? I entertain a motion to approve resolution 1218-2023. So moved. Second. All there. Motion carries three out. Ray, did you get your question answered on that one first off? McDonald Parkland demo. Me. I, I think it is. Demo. Demo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? Kathy, do you, um, out of curiosity, I ask. Do you remember what it costs us to run that through all these properties? Because they're all they're all basic all the properties that are on this, right? Yeah, those are yeah, yeah. those eighty eight are basically all over there. Do you remember what it cost? I mean, the per, it's like a hundred bucks per parcel or something. It's one twenty five per parcel. Ex certificate sales, yeah, certificate sales a little bit different. No, it's one twenty five per parcel. Yeah. Is the tax sale fee? And then the ad fee still the twenty five dollars. Okay. I, I just I asked for. I didn't mention the I just curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, because I know we don't want to own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm tired of these things running through every year, and with what they are. I, I wish well, that, I, I wish I was here. Would it be worth taking possession? Of? I mean, I just in all them. honesty, no, because ninety percent of them. Well, I shouldn't say ninety. Seventy-five percent of them are in the middle of a cornfield, in the middle of the woods, in swamp water. Turned down. You'll never. Well, that's I, why we're not selling. That's why I can't get them sold because there's. I, I understand it. That's why I was, I was warning. Yeah. I mean, it, it, how many parcels are on there? For this certificate sale, there will be 88. That's the smallest certificate sale that I've had since I've been in. I guess that's what I'm getting at because we have this every year. Yeah. So I'm just, I, I'm, I want these guys to think about it. I'm just, what, what are, what's the liability or the, the Did we sell of some of them here? No, I don't even think we'd sell them. I'm just tired of paying 10 grand a year. We do. We're whatever. actually, we are selling some. I think we sold in this certificate sale last spring. There was over a hundred there, yeah. and we sold 25, 30 of them, yeah. which really surprised me. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But and good. the other thing is, they're actually taking them to deed because a yeah. lot of times they'll buy them and then never follow through and take them to deed. So, 
Are okay. we making enough money off of them to pay to run them through all the time? No. On our certificate sale, no. Yeah. Tax sale, yes. I, I just something like, you know, I just, it's been for every year. I mean, they just keep. Well, like I said, if you sit and look at those parcels over there in that uh, township, no. no. Because it's, like I said, it's either <coughs> in the middle of a cornfield or it's, or majority of it's woods mm -hmm. and swamp water. Yeah. I guess I'm just out. tired of spending tax credits. Are these all, it isn't going to sell regardless. I, I, guess I agree. Right. Are these all the same yeah. ones keep coming up every year? Oh, majority of them, yes. <coughs> So we're just throwing just ten grand over here, mm -hmm. just to repeat the same procedure. Well, no, we're not. I don't. we I. I mean, I can't honestly tell you what the la what what it costs. I mean, she would be able to tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see that side of the sale. I just see what's collected. It's just something they might look into. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I don't want it. I, it's just a hard number every year to get hit. But. Well, it is because I sit, I sit and look at those parcels, and I look at some of them because there, I know there's a couple on there that I know the people next door to it are mowing them, but they don't want to, they don't want to pay the tax. They don't want to, they don't want to come in here and deal with it. Which it'd be easier to reduce the tax if we can. We can't. Okay. But you can't reduce the tax. Yeah. I mean, we can't. So that's. I mean, we're we own them, but we don't. Yeah. I mean, you have you I have the certificate so. to it, yeah. So I but yeah, just, it, it's a lot. It just drives me nuts every year. It's a lot. Of There's not enough. They're not in contiguous. Yeah. Contiguous right. like areas that you could actually do something yeah. with. Yeah, you have to have three of them or four. Oh, good lord! It take more than that. Foot by, it take more than that because yeah, they are so. Split. When yeah. when that whole development right. got done. They were thinking they were gonna make buku bucks off of small little lots, and yeah. that's where we. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, I'm just saying. I mean, if we, I don't know what it costs us to take it, but if we did, then, then <coughs> the tax would be. I mean, you could probably get rid of it without. I, I don't know. I'm just just something to think about. It's, it it's is a lot of money. Here it is for a way. So. It is. Okay. Um, not there. Mm, not there. <laughs> no. Okay, we got a resolution for health services. <clears throat> We're going to table that until the 29th. We have an amendment uh, on the ordinance on adopting the ARPA coronavirus. Uh, we have some concerns on that. We're going to table that until uh, the 29th. So we have travel authorizations. Do you guys look those over? Are you okay with those? Yeah. Yep. Okay, motion to approve those. So move. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Sign the letter. We have uh, claims. We have uh, payroll. 1215 dollars and six cents. The payroll deduction of one hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred and ninety-one dollars and eighty-one cents. Insurance claim docket for disbursements for 11-16-23 to 11-22 of $8,045.61. Insurance claim docket for disbursements for 11-23 to 11-29 of $4,130.32. $1,935. Utilities, $13,724.77. We have uh, December 18th, miscellaneous claims of $724,599.80. We 
have a lint distribution of $733,015.01. We have the uh, EMA salary reimbursement grant, $18,000. We have the wheel serve tax of fifty thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars and forty-four cents. you're asking about Rick and he, she can't put those in there yet because we haven't got pre we haven't got pre-approval yet for all, for all those we talked about before. yes okay. the ones we talked about before okay. the meeting she she can't, they were my okay there was in her packet she, well she's got the dockets prepared but until yeah. we get pre-approval from the state okay. those can't okay. those can't be distributed yet. Missing something. Good deal. Thank we're you. hoping okay. tomorrow okay good thanks okay we have a transfer um, Communications, uh, $1,560 over time to uh, $1,560 holiday compensation. We have a highway, uh, MDH, health insurance, $640 to a highway superintendent. That should be your stuff. Is it to the superintendent or assistant? Assistant. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. I just want to make sure. Do you ever get more money? I want to make sure it's going to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have. Uh, He'll be mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the annex, uh, $4,000 from snow removal to $4,000 to cleaning services to cover the year end contract. We have uh, the courthouse, snow removal, $5,125 to the cleaning services to cover the year end. We have uh, the administration building, uh, $2,400 for maintenance equipment to $2,400 uh, for the cleaning service. Got communications, $300 for repair and maintenance to training. Uh, Superior Court, $200. $200 for mileage to $200 to professional fees. Uh, jail maintenance, uh, $3,000 in overtime and uh, three, uh, $360 to maintenance engineer and the proof. $45 from clerk to uh, the health officer and food service inspector. Prosecutor's office, $1,029.25 for computer maintenance software to continuing education and mileage. Highway Department, uh, $1,500 for drainage assessment to uh, uniform rental. Uh, drainage Board, $823.96 in engineering fees to legal consultant. We have uh, 
probation, $1,300. Phone health insurance to uh, HSA. Kind of park and recreation, $68 from miscellaneous cost to contract to cover the things submitted in the Second. All favor? Motion carries three out.